All right, so we got every single Warhammer 40k fraction explained. This is part one. This is by Bricky. Uh, let's go to the video. Let's go. As someone who necessarily serve the Omnissiah, but someone who can appreciate them, you will not be getting my legs today, as I will be replacing them with various things depending on which faction we are currently. I actually about. already know um, some of the factions. I don't know them all though. If you guys want to uh, react to part so, two, we can. Hello, everybody. My name is Bricky. Hi, Bricky. This is going to be a long video and a large project that has been going on for quite some time. This is. I need two hands for this. This is every single Warhammer 40k race in kind of a nutshell explained a little bit of explanation a little bit of lore a little bit of talking about the tabletop but mostly lore what they're all about and also a little bit of background for those of you who just have no clue what warhammer 40,000 is now you see warhammer and warhammer i'm 40, starting to know i'm starting to know i'm starting to know a little bit plenty of but don't know a whole lot about they see oh there's these dudes in big power armor with chainsaw swords and they got these big old green orcs and there's some bugs over there and everyone calls these guys weebs and then there's these spiky bitches over here and i, I don't get it i don't understand where do i start well this video is particularly for you or for those of you who have a little bit of knowledge but you're kind of curious about each of the different races and factions that's me that's me that's me right warhammer. there that's me so overall the warhammer universe is vast when it comes to lore Wait, that's the and map background and each different faction is so different with the things that they believe in and some are human some are transhuman like where they all have all these crazy ass electronics on them you've got aliens and you've got the chaos factions and there's so much yeah. to entail that i decided to embark on this project to tell you what each and every single one of them is about real quick real quick i don't even mean to interrupt because i don't really pause like that but i do know some uh factions um my favorite one so far that i actually did learn about in a uh, bricky video was the Sa the salamanders right i think I said, if i said that right then i said it right but if i said it wrong it's a little self, a little self pat to the back of the head, but um, I, I like the salamanders a lot. They're uh, they're my favorite so far. Besides the uh, besides like the uh, the actual Space Marines slash the Indianapolis Colts, uh, they're like my second favorite. But the salamanders are definitely my favorite. And what the Warhammer universe is about as well, to give at least a little bit of an intro. It's a, it's a long video, so we're not gonna pause that much. Extremely bloated, but very very enjoyable world that I and many others partake in. So, I will be explaining every single faction in the Warhammer 40k universe, at least all the factions you can play as, and some smaller factions here and there. I will not be discussing absolutely everything in it, because that is a little bit much, and I'm yeah. not going to go too mega deep into the lore. I'm going to give you a pretty solid overview of each of the different factions, and have you learn a little bit about them, and we'll discuss a little bit of the tabletop as well, in case you are curious about that. But for this episode entirely, we are discussing the Imperium of Man, because that takes up a fat chunk of Warhammer lore. The universe! What right, is here we go. Warhammer 40,000? Well, the 40,000 starts off is the year 40,000. The 41st millennium, that's where it takes place, is in the year 40,000, 41,000 AD. You're already more knowledgeable. Let me read you a quote. First Wait, of many quotes. Did I learn it already? Video. I think I did. It is the 41st millennium. For more than 100 years, the emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of Earth. He is the master of mankind by the will of the gods and master of a million worlds by the might of his inexhaustible. Oh, so he's the goat. He is a rotting carcass. He's the greatest of all time. I like that. Visibly with power from the dark age of technology. He is the carrion lord of the Imperium for whom a thousand souls are sacrificed every day so that he may never truly die. To be a man in such times is to be amongst untold billions. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. These are the tales of those times. Forget the power of technology and science, for so much has been forgotten, never to be relearned. Forget the promise of progress and understanding, for in the grim, dark future, there is only war. There is no peace amongst the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsting gods. That sounds like Everything hell. Everything blows. And it blows fucking hard. Warhammer is probably the most dark and depressing universes ever in fiction. That's what I said like in the last video. 
everything is so absurdly horrible, Facts. destructive, or overpowered that it all kind of ends up canceling itself out. It's like Dota. War rages across the galaxy. Interstellar I mean, that's the name is of the game. only possible due to sacrificing a thousand souls a day to a rotting carcass of a man who you believe to be your god. We didn't learn about this. Yeah, we didn't learn about this. So basically, yeah, you heard, bro, what you heard was right. Bro, they sacrificed 1,000 soldiers a day just for this. Bro, it, it's like fuel for that dude, bro. He's not even like, he's technically not even living. They just got like a bunch of like just like energy tubes just connected to him. And he's just rotten. Like he's just rotten right there. And they're literally sacrificing a 1,000 souls a day just to keep that man alive. That is crazy. That man, that's something out of a, out of a horror movie, bro. That that that's just psychotic. If I'm being honest with you, bro. demonic gods and just demons literally that's psychotic, bro. The fabric of reality on a whim. Other Xenos or even other humans end up killing each other in untold billions across the galaxy. It is a time of unending war, slaughter, and a bloodbath amongst everybody. Planets are deemed unrecoverable and are completely destroyed on a whim. Everything sucks, but that's like the charm of it. See, everything in Warhammer is evil, but being evil is kind of fun. Like humanity in its own right is a xenophobic, prejudiced, and religious zealot group that kill each other just as much as they kill all of their enemies. But, and they're like mid, mid to high tier evil on the evil scale of Warhammer. Yeah. Nobody is good. No matter who you are, everyone is at some flavor, some color of evil. No, the salamanders are good. You are going to be the bad guy. But that's the fun of it. Because being the bad guy is badass. Villains are cool. No, they're not. Oh, well, so, you know what? I'm lying. Some villains are cool, bro. But I'm not going to sit here. Like, that, that's like Homelander. I think a lot of people like Homelander, bro. But Homelander, man, he's a menace. Like, they look cool. They got cool outfits. They I don't know. Cool Sometimes he's cool overdoing outfits. it. Villains are cool, man. And when everyone is a villain, everyone is pretty cool. That's what makes this so charming is that everyone can be the bad guy. So let's start off talking about the main bad guy, quote unquote, the Imperium of Man. Uh oh. Whack. The Imperium of Man is the main empire of the human race. All of humanity is under this one flag called the Imperium. And about 10,000 years ago, there was a man. He was the emperor, the emperor of mankind, a 10 foot tall psychic demigod. A go. He led humanity across the stars to colonize tons and tons of worlds, create superhuman soldiers. He was the really boy, basically. He, he was the goat. To a new age. This man, the emperor of mankind, was a psyker. And a psyker is like a magician of sorts. In the world of 40K, there is the warp, the immaterium, kind of like hell, but sort of like a purgatory. It's like, it's like a portal, basically. Hell. And a psyker is someone who can take that power and manifest it through their mind to use it to do stuff, well, like witchcraft stuff, magician stuff, spells, and lots of other things, but we don't want to get too into that. The emperor, big boy psyker. Top tier, A plus, maybe even S. Now the emperor created a bunch of sons. Yes, created a bunch of sons known as the Primarchs. He created 20, 18, 18 Primarchs to have them lead all of the different legions of humanity yeah. to the different stars and plans to help colonize and bring it out. Yeah. These Primarchs are that's, basically like little- That's a salamander, the right? Not all of them are psychers, but a lot of them are very, very powerful and they lead his special space marine legions. Then this big clusterfuck happened called the Horus Heresy, where the emperor's favorite son, the Primarch, Horus, ended up joining Chaos and leading nine other, well, I guess Dang. nine of the 18. Half, Wowzers. Half of his Primarchs directly to Earth to fight down the Emperor himself. Now, if you want to know what Chaos is, remember what I mentioned Dang. earlier, the warp, that immaterium, the hellish place? Yes. In there relies the four Chaos Gods. Imagine like Satan and three other Satans. Oh, the wow. The warp being kind of evil, those Chaos Gods, that's the reason. Epi and the so epitome those of evil. Those Chaos Gods manipulated Horus, and then Horus helped manipulate all eight other Primarchs oh, to lead this man. giant coup but wait, but wait, but wait. Are we forgetting? Wait, because I think I learned this from the other day. Are we forgetting? Because, and reminder, I'm a new booty. But whenever um the emperor, like the goat, 
whenever the emperor created uh his uh his 18 sons or whatever didn't he use some of the um didn't he use some of the stuff from the warp right didn't he use like some energy or whatever to to make his sons right then he didn't he do that i think he did that right if i'm wrong i'm wrong my bad if i'm wrong but directly on the emperor on earth and they fucked up shit after this huge civil war, Horus died, but not before brutally wounding the Emperor. And right at the end of his life, they put the Emperor on this large golden throne on Earth in which he is now alive, just barely, but slowly man, rotting that man, away. Man, he dead and gone, bro. Something called the Astronomicon, so long as he stays alive and is fed a thousand people a day. The I told y'all. The Astronomicon is like the North Star. If you want to do interstellar travel in 40k, you need to pass through that demonic warp I mentioned earlier. But how do you know where you're going? Well, the Emperor is there putting a nice little navigator right there. He helps navigate you to know where you're going. If you want to go Wait, he's still... from Earth to some crazy solar system across the way, you need to go through that warp, and then you need to know where you're going. Go through there and pop your way out. It's like uh, it's doing portal. nether travel yeah. in Minecraft so you can shorten the distance yeah. from going to areas. So long as the emperor is alive and being fed <laughs> a thousand people a day to stay alive, you can do that. Man, he dead Nobody and gone. Dies, and there's still our travels gone for yep. all of humanity. GG's. You're so boned. That's now, why they're giving him a thousand souls a day. 10,000 years ago, the Imperium has fallen from grace substantially. Dang. All technology has started to dwindle and die. There is now giant fundamental religious extremists that now believe the Emperor of Mankind was a deity, a true living god wow which is probably the last thing the emperor would have wanted to be remembered for yeah so now you have i think he was a good guy right Ecclesiarchy, which is this giant church entirely devoted to spreading the good word of the emperor he is now the holy emperor god the god emperor of mankind and all of the imperium has taken up worshiping him to the fullest extent and killing anything that isn't humanity in his name. Wow. The Imperium has this futuristic gothic tone to it and a hefty religious zealotry to them. If you think anything against the Emperor, that's heresy and you deserve to die. You did. It's called being a heretic. Oh, wow. Heretics die in 40K. There oh, is wow. no such thing as freedom of religion. There is no such thing as freedom of speech, so long as you are against the emperor. There is no such thing as any kind of tolerance. Oh, Everyone geez. is a religious zealot. You better believe. Some more than others. <laughs> but no matter what, you better believe. preaching that good word. So right now, everyone in humanity is trying to expand their empire across the stars. Okay. If you are a heretic, someone who doesn't believe in the emperor, you are deserving of death. If you believe in the chaos gods, you are also a deserving heretic, and you deserve yep. death. Death. If you are an alien race of any kind, you are a filthy Xenos and you deserve death as well. So long as the murder continues and humanity expands, the Imperium of Man is very, very happy. However, the largest fighting force of this Imperium is my personal favorite faction and the first faction we will discuss the Astra Militarum, or also known as the Imperial Guard. Who are these guys? Oh, nah. Hey, the Salamanders are better. The Imperial better. Guard is the main fighting force of the Imperium. And in a world of horrifying creatures, galactic monstrosities, the literal demons themselves breaking through the fabric of time to kill you, the Imperial Guard are untold billions of regular men and women wearing modern day like flak armor with a laser rifle oh. this is the humble las gun the main weapon of the so they're kind of like the marines armor. basically it fires superheated plasma lasers at an extremely fast fire rate it is reliable never jams it can blow off limbs giant holes in concrete it is overall an extremely devastating weapon in modern day it is oh. one of the weakest in the 40k oh. universe. Oh. Yeah, a, a laser rifle that never jams. It can oh. pull off limbs. One of the weakest weapons. Oh. That's the world we're in right now. Oh. But who cares? Because the Imperial Guard has, in each battle, 500,000 of these men and women. 500,000? 30, large armored tanks, 10,000 artillery batteries. The Imperial Guard wins through sheer numbers and firepower. 
They kind of have this World War I, World War II style aesthetic with legions of guardsmen as well as high company commanders and generals on the field along with them and multiple kinds of troops. A normal Imperial Guard battle starts off with artillery, long lines of artillery, <laughs> cracking the crust of the planet underneath the enemy's feet. And as this barrage continues, hundreds of thousands of guardsmen see a sea of guardsmen surges forward, firing and charging at everything possible while the planet rumbles as tanks roll up behind. It sounds like a classic war. block out the sun and tanks block out the dirt with the steps and hoof prints of millions of guardsmen. It is through numbers and sheer sundering firepower. They are the first and last line of defense for the Imperium and make up a huge bulk of the battles. The Imperial Guard is also made up of tons of different kinds of regiments. The Katachin jungle fighters live in a death world that's more hostile. He, he kind of like Rambo a little bit. Fight they'll ever get oh, never mind. Into. So they just have this steroid no hair. looking giant knife Rambo predator looking sons of bitches where nothing is anywhere near as scary as a simple knight on their home planet. You have the Valhallen Winter Soldiers who haven't felt their toes in 300 years. The Mordian Iron Guard who are more <laughs> interested in making their shoes shine than actually fighting a battle. And then, of course, the big one, the Cadians from Cadia. Oh, oh, oh. The biggest oh, export of guardsmen oh. in the entirety of the Imperium. You will fire your first gun at five. You will disassemble and reassemble it at 10. You will have pounding artillery drills day in and day out at 15. And you'll fight your first swarm lord at 16. And if you mention Kadia, you will burst into an unrelenting amount of tears and sadness like I do daily. To quote, I have at my command an entire battle group of the Imperial Guard. Man, they got the little toddlers signing up for the army. That's crazy, man. Bro, they, bro, they can't even like learn their ABCs. Like, bro, they can't even like have that warm, fuzzy feeling on Christmas Eve. Oh man, that's crazy, bro. Fifty regiments, including specialized man, free the little kids, bro. Stealthers, mechanized formations, armored companies, combat engineers, and mobile artillery. Over half a million fighting men and thirty thousand tanks and artillery pieces are mine to command. Emperor, show mercy to the fool that stands against me, for I shall not. Dang. The Imperial Guard are my personal favorite faction in 40K. They're the army I collect the most, the ones I enjoy playing the most, and the one I enjoy in the lore sense a lot. There's something about just a regular man with a laser rifle being told to charge the horrors of this universe. But that doesn't really work. willingly doing so for his god emperor. It's just poetic. They actually I understand that. Okay. The main Imperial Guard tactics pretty well. Large amounts of artillery that doesn't require a line of sight. Lots of tanks. Tons of infantry. Drop troops and gunships. Overall, they're pretty similar to how they sound, uh, though a little bit expensive to collect, unfortunately. And oh, they don't wow. hit a lot. They have a bit of a bad aim, but you don't. Really hey, care how much does uh, you're just drowning them? In real quick, real quick question: How much is the um is is like the Warhammer like uh figures and stuff like that? I imagine they go for like a bunch of money, right? Like, like this game is like is deep in the lore. So I imagine, bro, having like every single like faction just in like one room, all lined up and stuff. I imagine that's like it, bro. It, that's at least fifty, like, bro, fifty million. Like that's Shot. crazy. However, if you want more accurate fire and specialization, we can move on to talk about Spetsmarines. Who? Ah! The, oh, the Angels of Death. Angels I heard. Death I heard about these. Next. Space Marines are genetically engineered super soldiers and superhumans. They're given extra organs, their skin tissue is toughened, their bones are stronger, they're taller than the average person. They're pretty massive people. And these are the specialized super soldiers that carry out a lot of the more specific tasks for the Imperium. And there's tons of legions of them. In fact, there's one per Primarch. Each Primarch, the Emperor's son, as I mentioned before, oversees their legion of space marines. The genetic upgrade they get is based on the genes of said Primarch. It's like called a gene seed. That's okay. what brings them up to this like superhuman level. As Ooh, stated, okay. each Primarch has their own legion. A robot, girly man, 
has the Ultramarines. Jagatai Khan has the White Scars. A Rogel yep. Horn has the Imperial Fists. Corvus Korax has the Raven Guard. Where, where's my favorite? There's a whole bunch of other side sections that are where's also my favorite at? extremely interesting and have a little bit more of a twist on the average Space Marines. Where's the Salamanders? What are you at? A bit. Humorously enough, I don't have a whole lot to say about Space Marines. They're superhumanly fast. In, in fact, it's been said that nothing that large should move that quick. Facts. Power armor moving at blazing bro, they got deep the reasons on their back, bro. Their skin is tougher. They are overall just extremely powerful soldiers. Yeah. In fact, where they differ comes down to which Space Marine Legion we're talking about. For instance, the Ultramarines done by Robot Girlman, Gilliman, Gilliman, are the main blue boys. Strong in almost every way. The Jack of the all The Indianapolis kind of Colts. That are a little bit too strong, and that's a lore problem, but uh, the White Scars by Jack Aren't Khan they speed, are right? all about speed, yep. freaks, I, Yeah, fast, I knew it, yep. I, bikes. See, I we're remember, I remember. Land speeders, you want to go in quick, you want to hit them hard, you want them to be swarming around like buzz flies. Buzz, buzz, saw, buzz saws. With the speed of buzz saws. Fuck you, Pale King. Oh. Salamanders love fire. Fire in the forge, fire in battle. Flamers, melt a gun. Yeah. Melt guns. Just so long as something can be burning, that's big. And they're also Burn. actually some of the nicest of the Space Marines. Yep. A lot of Space Marines have this kind of like holier-than-thou thing because of their genetic strength. Yeah. However, the Salamanders tend to put human lives above the lives of themselves, which is actually rather rare. They're also all black, yep. but not like just regular black like like 2 a.m uh, it's okay bro white it's okay bro i know black. like they have a charcoal dark oh 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 never mind oh let me let me take those back whoa never oh man he black black oh my goodness oh hey man listen i know they're known for being nice but bro listen if, if bro if i saw somebody like this in school bro and he was in my class bro i know he's getting roasted they they go do that one they go do that one joke where it's like teachers like yo uh could you turn the lights off Jimmy Jimmy turns the lights off they be like oh my god where is Salamander yo if we all start dying oh man that's a that's a classic and joke blazing red eyes apparently something about living on their home planet of Nocturne which I don't know if that makes much sense but who cares this is like fantasy land yeah who, yeah Overall, who cares Salamanders are actually one of my personal favorite legions because they're just really cool. They're fun to play as because of all their flamer weapons. And they're nice. And they have a nice, like, more heartwarming lore as opposed to being super evil like yeah. everyone else is. I like that. Oh, my that. God, we're not even a quarter of the way through the Space Marine Legions. Uh, Imperial Fists believe in the power of the siege and defensive positions. Uh, Raven Guards, master of stealth and sabotage while having... A lot of people hands. like that one, right? Iron Hands, masters of machines and vehicles while uh. being really goddamn good at being sold on eBay after one nerf. Space Wolves, uh, Vikings and wolves and tons of wolves and, and axes, battle axes, fur everywhere. Oh, Space wow. Wolves, He's so a angry, hairy guy. Teeth. Ah. Blood Angels, the genetic defect to make them want to drink blood and go crazy, called the Red Thirst. They have Cupid wings. Excuse me? It's a little bit strange, and they are all super gay for Sanguinius. Dark Angels are old school knights and inner circle theme, and... Oh. Are you a heretic? Oh. Me? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> Death Watch, a fancy pantsy anti Xenos group. Oh that my nobody god. Plays because Death Watch and look cool though, but no isn't, one plays them. I don't know about Death Watch. Isn't Chaplin on that though. team? Black Templars for the people who no. if you haven't prayed at least three times oh, a day, no. you're going to start praying out that airlock. And I'm sure there's some other chapters I may have missed as well, like Crimson Fists and stuff. But those are the main ones right here. Here, here. Quote from the Emperor himself They shall be my finest warriors, these men who give of themselves to me. Like clay I shall mold them, and in the furnace of war I shall forge them. They shall be of iron will and steely sinew. In great armor I shall clad them, and with the mightiest weapons shall they be armed. They will be untouched by plague or disease. No sickness shall blight them. They shall have such tactics, strategies, and machines that no foe will best them in battle. They are my bulwark against the terror. They are my defenders of humanity. They are my space marines, and they shall know no fear. And on the tabletop, they fuck. Oh, they fuck hard. As of making this video, Space Marines are laughably strong. That might change at some point, but overall, Space Marines just have the, it's like a Swiss Army knife, a tool for anything you need, except it's like a gold-plated Swiss Army knife. Oh, it is snap. extremely strong. 
They're the you Golden are Boys. Okay. Of the tabletop of Warhammer, Space Marines are a great start. Also, whatever gameplay style you have, whether you want to be sit back with long range and heavy weaponry, go fast and run in, or even just full melee, all of these options are totally there for you. Space Marines are super badass, but unfortunately, it's time we start praying to our new god, the 2011 Honda Civic. So is it any huh? wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! Yo, that the thing looks corrupted. Mechanicus. The Adeptus Mechanicus are a technophile cult on Mars. Now, these people are a little bit weird because they don't actually really believe in the Emperor of Mankind. And you might think, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, it's Gigi's. That sounds like some heresy. Yeah, that's Gigi's. A little bit. They believe in the Emperor. They believe in his power. But they don't pray to him. They pray to something called the Omnissiah. And the Omnissiah the is this kind of machine god that they believe permeates in all machines. And if you think, well, wait a minute, yeah, they right. believe in a different god as well? That sounds like super heresy. Well, yes-ish, but uh -oh. they also make all your guns, and they make all your tanks. Oh. And they make everything that you have. Oh. So you can't really tell them the fuck oh, off. Oh, wow. Because... So they're kind of using them in a way. They're like, oh, okay, you really don't believe in what we believe in, and, and to be honest with you, you really should be dead, but you do make our stuff. So, we're gonna let you live. It's fine. You're not gonna win nothing if you don't got stuff to shoot people with. True. See, they're True. on Messiah. At least makes sense from their standpoint. They believe it to be a deity that permeates through all machines. Your Honda Civic, yeah. your standard bolt gun, yeah. your Dune Strider Walker, wow. your giant mechs, your huge ships. The wow. Messiah is present through all. And the only reason your stuff works is because the machine spirit in it says it works. If you want your gun to work, your tank to run, you must pray to it. And I mean full stop. You need to start chanting in high gothic. You need to burn incense. You need to sit on your knees and pray to that car. You need to rub oil on your robes. And you need to go, ahamana, 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 ahamana. Full stop if you want your damn thing to work. If you I want to turn the whole upside down. Wait, huh? We got to pray to the guns? Oh, nah. Forget that, bro. Mm -mm. You know what, bro? As a matter of fact, bro, I'll just take all the bullets out and I'll just throw them myself. That's crazy, bro. When you're gun to that's, fire, just, that's crazy, you bro. To do that. They are very bizarre and they actually have a bit of a point because it's obviously working. And if you look at them, I don't know how that works. So they obviously know something about what they're doing. The most notable member of the Adidas Mechanicus is Arch Magos, Magos, whatever. Belisarius call. Look at this, look at this dude. Look at this dude. Yeah, nah, he looks evil. Yeah. He looks that, like a criminal. This is the group we're talking about. Yeah, he looks like a criminal. These I can't lie to you. Weirdos. Here. The Omnissiah. Yo, Bricky, be careful, bro. The the the, the Credo, Credo, eh, Omnissiah. There is no truth in flesh, only betrayal. There is no strength in flesh, only weakness. There is no constancy in flesh, only decay. There is no certainty in flesh, but death. But flesh death. Is weakness flesh is death the omnissiah is the god of the machines and if you wish to be whole if you wish to be holy if you wish to give unto him you must saw down your limbs and remove your organs and replace them with mechanical parts because that is what he wants and that is how you will become enlightened hard technophiles mixed with religious extremism wow sir mechanicus now for their That's a nasty combo things, they are with the Skitari. The Skitari operate with very bizarre weaponry and lots of different kinds of vehicles, tanks, and different people in between. They're very weird, uh, but they have extremely wacky and, and enjoyable, and in fact, quite effective, both in the real game and in the lore, weaponry and gear. Overall, as an army on the tabletop, they're very weird and have a whole bunch of different shenanigans. Yeah, but bro, I like can tell. Quirky, wacky techno thing. Nah. I give them a pickup. I don't like they that. They're so 
paranoid. I, I got to keep going. They're so paranoid and crazy. These dune striders you see right here, yeah. one guy was able to make them work. One guy, and he died. And they're so scared they'll never work again that they keep them on and they never turn them off. And they run around in a circle. So basically, this whole faction is like a, is like a faction of like superstition, basically. They're like, yo, if we don't do this, if we don't do that, if we don't do that, bro, we're not going to win. Our guns are not going to work. Our machines are not going to work. It's, it's like a whole big, like, superstition, basically, which is, I mean, okay. The whole time. Until they need them, and then they corral it, and they go into battle. Wowzers. Yep. The Adeptus Mechanicus. I want to turn the upside faith, down. Cool, cool. Let's talk about the Sisters of Battle. A simp has fallen for an e-girl in Lego City. The Sisters of Battle of the Adeptus Sororitas, if that's how I pronounce it correctly, is an all-female group of battle sisters going through the Ecclesiarchy section of the Imperium. The okay. Ecclesiarchy is, of course, the church. This is, imagine a private army of the church, which is scary, yeah. and it is. The sisters are an extremely zealous force. What that mean? They take this to a full extreme. They believe in three main things, faith, martyrdom, and fire. Through the Bolter, the Flamer, and the Melta, the Sisters of Battle are extremely potent at taking out chaos and heretics. Mainly heretics, because as they are a fighting section of the Ecclesiarchy Church, that's the big thing they want to kill. Any form of heretic will face the Emperor's justice through those three main weapons, the Bolter, the Flamer, and the Melta, and they will do so with extreme prejudice, literally. They are the closest things we have to nuns in space. And I'm talking hardcore nuns. Ooh. They carry holy fire on their backs. They have Dang, holy, they strong like, too. books and sigils all across their armor. Their main battle tank is a fucking pipe organ missile launcher. They have small babies that what they have the hell? Like, removed their brain capacity to make them little servant cherubs oh no 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 hey i'm gonna be honest with you yo y'all know i love my women out there bro i like girls 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 listen y'all know i love my women out there but this faction gotta go they over here making it they ever bro they turn the babies into 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 war slaves bro this is crazy work to they fly gotta go around and give them ammunition and shit they drop churches from low orbit as many drop pods onto battles they drop churches churches into battles they gotta go and they, they gotta go layer war they gotta go and holy music from their frigates in low atmosphere why do girls gotta be the worst shower one holy water across the battlefield these are the people you are dealing with and they're fucking awesome they can literally stave off demons Oh, never mind. On the tabletop. Oh, wait. Because their faith is that strong. Oh, wait. They remember got the faith. The oh, okay. Never mind. They're good. The warp, well, the warp also manifests in your mind. All of your emotions, negative and positive, go through the warp. It's the immaterium, the place of all things. Oh. So if you are that mentally fortified, that mentally strong, you can stave off horrifying demons. Wow. And all these girls, oh not a crack oh wow not a crack in that mental oh level. oh they strong as up here i like that as they are and as much as their <laughs> models look a lot like ongo ongo gabloglian <laughs> yeah which i can't unsee anymore i gotta yeah, say I, can't either. I love their design i think they're extreme never mind they're not they're not they're the worst one i apologize they're not i promise they're not they just released a whole new line of figures very recently they were dropping and churches and turning wonderful. babies into war into Everything war assets from celestine the living literally undying saint from the triumph of saint catherine which is literally a funeral procession as a model those organ tanks i mentioned earlier this shit is the most over-the-top badassery in a lot of the warhammer universe and god damn it is it over the top but it's not, it's not that Battle bad are so cool while I'm a guardsman at heart, oh, we'll give it to him. This is such a cool faction. By Bolter. Hey, are any of those girls? Uh, they're single or what? Delta blast. The mutant, the heretic, and the traitor alike are cleansed of their sin of existence. So it has been for five millennia. So shall it be until the end of time. Okay. And speaking 
of burning demons. Uh-oh. The Grey Knights. The Grey Knights are the first army I actually collected back in 7th edition. The Grey okay. Knights are a super secretive and much more old school look at power armored knights. Except they are all psychers. All of them have that crazy space magic magician shit. For every 100,000 guardsmen, there's one Grey Knight. For every 10,000 Sisters of Battle, there's one Grey Knight. For every 1,000 Space Marines, there's one Grey Knight. Grey Knights are the strongest of the strong, both in mental will and absolute just strength. Wait, what? These are Space Marines that are all high-level psychers. No, nah, these all are Space, are space Giants. Do one goal, and that is kill demons. The Emperor believed oh, wait, that's that a good the thing. demons of chaos were the number one threat to the Imperium, and he probably is right. However, this group is entirely based on doing that through a myriad of tactics. Coming from the planet, or I guess the moon, of Titan in the Soul System, the Grey Knights are thrown through extremely rigorous training and are as clear of mind and soul as they possibly can be. Since the demons of the warp are the warp and your mind projects to the warp, people can go insane very fast, especially lower level psychers. These Grey Knights need to be able to harness the warp in the presence of demons and stay perfectly sane. One of their characters, one of my favorite characters, is named Castellan Crow. He has a demon blade, the black blade of Mahamahama. And he has uh, to have it on him because it tempts everyone nearby, constantly beckoning them, use my power, use my strength, suck my penis, whatever the possibility. And so he has to keep it on him all the time as this thing whispers to him consistently. And he has to stave it off forever, being alone in his chambers or on the battlefield, because anyone who gets too close to it oh, might be tempted a little. Give too me your soul. That pure wowzers heart and mind, and all the characters in the Grey Knights are basically like that. The only issue is that um, the Grey Knights have a scorched earth policy. What? You know, more ways than one. What that mean? If they're fighting demons. Demons corrupt and make people crazy. Yeah. So if I'm a guardsman, and I'm fighting demons. And the Grey Knights arrive, and they kill all the demons. I'm a risk. And so, guess who's not making it out of there? Oh. On the tabletop, they're very strike fast, strike hard kind of people. They teleport all around the place. They are fast strike wow. teams. Small amounts of models because they're so dang strong. You only have so many characters. But with it, you get in there. You're very tough, very tanky. You hit really hard, and you try to bounce around the battlefield quickly. But you don't have numbers. And so every dead Grey Knight hits really damn hard. They're fun, though, if you like that kind of uh, fast striking kind of army. Oh, and also, uh, Kaldor Drago is a thing. We're not even going to get into Kaldor Drago. All right, that is, uh, oh, my goodness. Christ. Oh, dang, he must be hammer. the evil of the evil. I am evil. the male about his fist. I am the spear in his hand. Though we are lost, I am the shield on his arm. I am the flight of his arrows. I am the hammer. I am the sword. I am the shield. I am a soldier at the battle at the end of time. Grey Knights are pretty hardcore. Okay. They are as holy as you can get for a Space Marine. If you like Space Marines and you want to, you know, that they're holy enough, you want to be holier? <laughs> Grey Knights. Okay. If you want to be holier and big, let's talk Imperial Knights. Do you like gigantic walkers the size of homes? Yo, Bricky, are you okay, bro? Buildings? Do you want to kill heretics, but you want to kill like 40 of them per turn? Do you want a gigantic old school knight noble house style of walkers with giant chainsaw arms? Then you got Imperial Knights. Imperial Knights, it's not a whole lot to talk about them. Because they're just gigantic walkers. But they have this tanks, old okay. school like, house feel to them. Like Literally, like, there are houses. Each Imperial Knight comes from a house. And each of them act in their own special way. These behemoth of walkers also destroy almost everything in their path. Killing full swaths of squads in a couple shots. Stepping on legions of troops. Like These things do not mess around. And they look so cool. Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights, actually, for that matter, don't have a whole lot to discuss. They're just super big, heavy walkers, and they look different depending on your house or Chaos God you currently believe in. And overall, these things are just really cool if you want to murder everything in your path. They're the big, scary, big unit of Warhammer, and if you want to collect them, 
go to town. They make for a great painting project too. Game over back down to earth. Let's talk something about a little bit, uh, a little bit different, a little more gold. If guardsmen are regular soldiers, <laughs> space marines are super soldiers, <laughs> gray knights are super, super soldiers, the adeptus custodes are super soldiers cubed. The adeptus custodes oh, wow. are the third major army I own. I, I know three armies. I mean, I bro, I, I got their armor does look nice, though. Give me, like, look at this. Bro, their armor looks crazy. Hey, I like their armor. I can't lie to you. Wow. They definitely dripped out. Carried away. That's all. I only have three. Okay. <sighs> Dang, Brick, you got caught up. Final brand of Space Marines, but these ones are super special. Okay. If a guardsman is six foot, a Space Marine is seven feet, a custodian is eight feet. These are the giant defenders of Holy Terra, which is also Earth. Earth is Terra. Earth is Terra. Themselves. These are the people that literally guard the Emperor's throne room. Hence, custodies. These boys protect the Emperor's throne room at all times and are literally like handcrafted people. They're not humans brought up by a gene seer or something. These are all handcrafted super soldiers. I think from a tube. These behemoth of men are like eight feet, eight and a half feet tall and functionally immortal. They stand eight feet. still, spear in hand for hundreds of years without the need to sleep and barely even the need to eat watching over the throne room and every other area of holy terra for their entire purpose in life and oh my lord are they terrifying these custodians put space marines to shame if you liked your super soldiers these are your super mega soldiers one of these men can take on probably three space marines and most likely win there are many different groups of custodians yo they're that so cracked watch or yo he does he kind of does look like kratos i mean i'm not surprised Yo, look, he got the red and white. Yeah, he does like Kratos a little bit. Personal favorite, the Aquilan Shield. The Aquilan Shield go out to seemingly unimportant individuals and protect them because they believe that they are going to be doing something very important in their lives. For instance, let's say a, a regular guardsman gets the protection of this giant eight and a half foot tall golden god because that guardsman will end up becoming a general one day or something of that nature. The custodians work in mysterious ways and are almost always outnumbered but never outmatched. These people are pretty horrifying, both on the tabletop as well as in the lore. There are very few of them, however, and there's actually an extremely small amount of them. But that's kind of the point. There's only so many of these people that can have war gear this strong, weapons this powerful, and training this good. And the custodians have all three of it. For 100 years, I stood my watch amidst the somber shadows of the Sanctum Imperialis. I was still as a statue but always ready, always attuned to dangers unseen. Days, months, years passed by in a frenzied blur beyond those walls, yet within, little moved and nothing changed. For 100 years, I did not but wait, yet had any threat appeared, I would have struck it down in a heartbeat. For 100 years, I stood my watch, and as it ends, I can tell you this, patience is a weapon. The custodians it is. are the top it is. dogs I'll admit of that. the it Imperium, is. and they hurt just that same way. Though I do want to discuss a little bit about the Sisters of Silence before we get out of here. Because the Sisters of Silence I also have a few of, and they're really fun, but they don't get enough attention. These kind of bald plume ladies are a whole group of pariahs, or also known as blanks. We'll be referring to them as blanks from now on. So as every mind is somewhat connected to the warp, these blanks are a genetic mutation that is, has it suppressed heavily. Because of that mind suppression, normal people feel this weird, like, uncomfortable nature when around them. When a sister of silence walks past them, you feel ill. You feel just uncomfortable and strange. So most of them don't actually live past childhood, because once they are birthed, they're, well, you know, killed or something at a very young age because they just emit a horrifying aura. Wait, These what? ladies, however, are guardians of the throne as well for more psychic threats. See, none of the custodians are psychers, so they have a difficult time dealing with major demons and other kinds of psychic phenomena. 
These sisters are extremely specialized in it. All of them taking a vow of silence as they don't speak, hence the term sisters of silence. Yeah. But they communicate through hand gestures and things of that nature. But if there's a demon issue, if there's any kind of warp-based problem, the sisters are extremely adept at Ooh. dealing with them, thanks Ooh. to their blank gene. They normally work a lot of time with the custodians because they have to deal with both kinds of threats. But okay. they're not represented that way on the tabletop. In fact, they only have like one real model form, which is very unfortunate. I hope they'll get something new soon because I think they should really be working together as it is that way in the lore. But okay. hopefully we'll get there soon. But if we're talking about blanks, let's talk assassins. My precious <laughs> It's been a long video. <laughs> we're about to round it out. We got this and one uh -oh. more human thing, and then yeah, we're one, done. The assassins, one more after though, this one. the officio assassinorum. Oh, boy. These people are deadly. Yeah, they're called assassins. I mean, they're, they're called assassins. Oh, yeah. man. These people will mess you up. So these are from the officio assassinorum, a very special organization, and they are handpicked by the grandmaster of the officio assassinorum from the... Shit, what was it called? Scola Progenium. Who the It's heck? basically an orphan school. If your parents got murdered by demons or something, you get sent to this and you get trained to be whatever. A uh, oh. Tempestus drop troop, uh, an inquisitor maybe even. Oh, who's uh, that? You get a uh, blank gene and you get thrown into the sister's silence or sometimes you just disappear. When you are taken, however, you go to one of four temples because the assassin norm works in the temple style of things. Each of these temples are the Vindicare, Caluxus, Calidus and Everstore temples. We'll start with the Vindicare. I'm far we good? away. We I've been sitting here for three weeks. <laughs> Boom! The Vindicare temple is the main sniper based temple. Oh, Gigantic snap. He's in a cut. Rifles for all these assassins. Their whole point Am I good? Is to be able I think to I'm good, y'all. And sit there, eye in scope, for weeks, waiting for their perfect target. What? Taking people out from literal miles. Away. Man, you know he got three weeks of just dinner right next to him. There's no shot. He's just sitting there with a sniper like these, bro. And he don't got no type of like animal crackers next to him or something, bro. There's no shot, bro. I can't lie to you, bro. After like the first week of me waiting there, bro, I gotta order like some type of McDonald's or or the new Kaisen that burger or something. There's no shot. I'm gonna be honest with you. After that's that's, that's crazy work. Long time periods. The Vindicare Temple is about precise, perfect aim. There have been reports of Vindicares being able to single out particular body parts from over two, three miles away. Temples in the head, the jugular, for instance, and been sitting there after weeks. And when they're ready, take that shot. Time is done. Packs them up. The Calidus Temple, however, is a lot more about shape shifting and deviant art. It's mostly a female based one, or at least it seems to be. And this allows a lot of body augmentation for certain individuals to be able to kind of transmorph themselves and infiltrate areas that are problems. These assassins will end up taking missions that take them years, two, three years, to infiltrate a heretical group and slowly work their way up just to get enough time to put a bullet into the main target's head and then escape unharmed. What have they missed Or them? become the main target and sabotage it from within. These are all completely about deception, mind tricks, polymorphing. So this is like the like this is like the Mission Impossible lots team. Of okay. Drawings, lots of drawings. The Eversor Temple. Just kind of disturbing one. The Eversor Temple Thing is like about Skeletor. you don't want anything to come back alive, friend or foe. You want it all dead. And Eversor is psychogenically conditioned with just psychotherapy and psychological torture to only feel violence, hatred, and anger. It does the clockwork orange style of thing of just making you forced to watch never ending pain and misery and, and psycho conditioning, I guess is the term. And then they pump you full of tons of psychedelic drugs and they cryo freeze you. And then they drop you in an area where they just want to make sure everything is dead. And then you defrost Full of just all this insane, mind-boggling psychotherapy and, and psychedelic drugs, and you just go to town. Yeah, if you can we can we have a prayer for them, bro? Can we have a prayer for them? That's the worst thing I've ever heard in this game so far. That's the worst thing that I've ever heard from this franchise. 
Are you serious? They, are we cuckoo for buku buffs? Th this is ridiculous. That's the craziest thing that I've heard. What, bro? My heart, bro. My heart feels for them, bro. Wow. That is, bro. This is ludicrous, I don't, bro. Not the rapper. This is a straight ludicrous. Because you don't care if anyone comes back alive. You're like, all right, lost cause. Send him in. Finally, there's the most bizarre temple, the Kaluxus Temple. Oh my. The Kaluxus assassins Brother, are my feared, heart. even among the other temples. So that blank gene, the people will go to the Kaluxus Temple with this as well. And this is where they can harness that to be massively anti-psyker or even just anti-regular people. They are seen with extreme fear and uh, distrust among many, many people. They are described by the Eldar by quote, as being pure evil. Imagine that uncomfortable feeling from that blank gene I mentioned. Yeah. And then imagine them being taught and given equipment to amplify it by a hundred. If normally regular people feel uncomfortable, now they are basically akin to being a siren wailing directly in your ear. And if you're a psyker, oh no. The sheer presence of a Klux assassin is enough for you to tear your skin off. You will rather gouge your eyes out and rip your nails off than even being near this person. The closest assassin is when you want psychers to literally lose their minds and they will go on their knees and ask you to gun them down because it is a suitable choice over being anywhere near you. The motto what? of that temple is that which is unknown and unseen commands the greatest fear. Now for the tabletop, the assassins aren't that special. You can call them in no matter what Imperium faction you are. And they do a lot of work for themselves, but at the same time, they're very specialized and require a lot of finesse. And they work the way you generally want them to though. You want to cause some distortion and weird stuff, you take a Calidus. You want to just murder swaths of infantry and then blow up Eversor. You want to kill that one guy, Vindicare, and if you have a lot of psychers, Kaluxus. It's a nice little like, Jack of all trades if you have a specific thing oh, you want to kill. No. And you get to choose which, which is really fun. But now, let's talk about the last human faction. We can round this video out before we do part two. The Inquisition. We have a lot to talk about. If you guys want, uh, want me to check out part two, I, I can definitely check out part two like the next day or the day after. Um, just let me know. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel, by the way. All right, last one. Here we go. Them. The Inquisition. All right, here we go. Oh, boy. Where do I even begin with the uh -oh. Inquisition? Take, take every secret police okay. you can think of. Uh, the KGB, the Gestapo, the CIA, FBI, any of these kinds of people. Okay. And then mark it up by about 10 okay. and give them the most power in the entire Imperium. No, you know what? How about this? Okay. This, this right here, it's a, not just a quote. This is the imperial motto, the motto okay. of the Inquisition. Okay. I apologize for my bad pronunciation. It's fine. Innocentia nihil probat. Innocence proves nothing. The most powerful organization in the Imperium, the secret police, their number one motto is innocence proves nothing. The Inquisition goes around like the secret police or like detectives to find issues in the Imperium. And they have different Ordos depending on which one we're talking about. The Ordo Hereticus, the Ordo Xenos, uh, the Ordo Malleus, for instance, and a whole bunch of other ones. Hereticus is obvious, they deal with heretics. Xenos tries to find alien threats and Malleus is demons. They all have different specializations in what they're trying to go for as this Inquisitor. And that's what they're called, Inquisitors. Each of them, as an Inquisitor, has their own free reign to do as they wish. They may have a ship and a crew, and they go out to find problems and interrogate people a lot. They are above the law in every department over Space Marines. Now, the Space Marines might argue against them and stuff, and there might be a lot of blowback, but yeah. technically they are above them as Inquisitors. They are looking to investigate and figure out coups and cults. So are they like dirty cops? And possible Xenos issues like gene stealers or a new uh, threat coming into an area. 
They're about learning that stuff and actually doing detective work. And memes aside, they're pretty good at it. The Inquisition having all of this power does make them a little bit power hungry and frantic sometimes. And yes, it is still a bad thing, but most of them are pretty good at their job. Ooh. And they spend a lot of time being very diligent to make sure that all of these leads they follow are proper. Hey, is she single? Space detectives with just enormous power and sometimes a bit of a power complex. And we haven't even talked about Exterminatus yet. Exterminatus. Who the hell is that? Exterminatus is deeming a planet unfit to be saved. I deem Dang. that this planet, planet is Namek. infested and taking it back will cost too many resources and is not worth it. I have now committed Exterminatus on this planet. I will now sign the death warrant of an entire Imperium planet as it is unfit to take and better to be destroyed than allow the enemy to hold it. This can mean saturation bombardment. This can mean cracking the planet's core and breaking it apart. Doesn't matter. Render this planet inhospitable to all life. Yes, the innocence proves nothing people are the only people who can choose this planet must die in its entirety. So yeah. You're playing the villain. <laughs> now, it is memed a lot, but most Inquisitors are very rare to do external. So, like, they're playing a role as, like, the judge? Is that it? They're, like, playing a role as, like, the judge, juror, and executioner? Is that, like, their whole role? I thought they were detectives. The brother just took it to a whole nother level. What? Exterminatus. Exterminatus is a very crazy thing. There's only so many worlds that you don't want to destroy all of them. Uh, now, naturally, with the memes aside, there are some people who are a little bit rough on this one <clears throat> <clears throat> but most inquisitors generally don't like to do exterminatus a ton but it is an option they have and it's a crazy option when you think about it secret police inquisition are unfortunately not represented on the tabletop very much you generally kind of put one in your army if you feel like it you have a I mean, couple yeah, they're, like, they're kind of like detectives in a way so they don't really like you know they're not really fleshed out very well yeah. and personally they need a lot more stuff put in there and they, they really need a lot more effort put into them. yeah intimidation quite where i want them to be overall the inquisition makes for a lot of the best storytelling as well because it's a little bit hard to talk about a big story of a whole bunch of space marines killing something right it's just a big battle story it's not as interesting having that intrigue and that moral dilemma that an inquisitor has makes for a lot better media and honestly, the more people do it, I think it's better because then it adds a little more humanity to the Warhammer, horrible, horrible, grim darkness. And wow, we just finished the humans. All, All right. right, come back for part two. We're going to talk about chaos and Xenos because uh -oh. we got to talk about the four chaos gods and all the chaos marine legions and the Tau and the Necrons and the Orcs. And oh boy, boy we got a lot. I'll see you in part two. All right. Shout out to Bricky man for this um, this long uh, field explanation of uh, the, the of the factions. I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was calling them the fractions earlier. That's my bad. That, that, that's my fault. But um, yeah, I'm, listen. I don't care what you say, bro. The Salamander is the number one faction of all time. Uh, go argue with your dad. Uh, I really don't care, man. Comment down below if you guys actually enjoyed this. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you guys actually enjoyed this. Um, if you guys want me to check out part two, we can definitely do that. Make sure you just, bro, just like the video, bro. Why not just like the video uh, for part two? And uh, I'll see you guys out there for the next time I'm out. And.